Spacewalk officers here in Mission Control report uh, that both suits are operating to perfection as uh, we begin uh, to see uh, Tim Copra emerging from the Quest airlock. Uh, this the start of the third spacewalk of his career. The uh, Quest airlock was installed on the International Space Station during the STS-104 mission of the shuttle Atlantis in July of 2001. Tim Peake, just keep hanging for a second. We're trying to get a good camera on what we're looking at. Copy that. And there is a close-up view of Tim Copra uh, working at the base of the 1B solar array. Again, uh, as he attaches uh, various pieces of equipment uh, to handrails and other attached points uh, in the lower left-hand portion of this view is uh, the mast canister for the 1B array. Uh, that holds uh, the electronics, essentially, uh, that governs uh, the operation of the array and the direction of uh, electrical potential down to the sequential shunt unit that will be replaced uh, during the next night pass about uh, 47 minutes from now. All right, gentlemen, looking great. Glad to see you both out there together on the tip of the world. Uh, we have two good WVS views, and they are spectacular. And Tim Peake now has joined the Copra at the uh, base of the 1B ar solar array, right at the very end of the starboard truss of the International Space Station. And Tim Peake, as you work your way around the mass canister there, feel free to look at the load pads and get some situational awareness of what they look like for a fully seated SSU. And uh, a good view of Tim Copra, his feet now planted in that portable foot restraint. Again, that will give him leverage uh, as he uh, uses a uh, ratchet wrench and a uh, pistol grip tool uh, to uh, not only break the torque on the single bolt holding the failed sequential shunt unit in place, but ultimately uh, to remove that uh, single bolt and uh, then uh, be joined uh, by Tim Peake to remove the failed unit from uh, its location at the base of the 1B solar array. There are a series of uh, tasks to be conducted by the flight control team here in Houston. Uh, they're called inhibits to make sure that uh, all of the electrical systems are placed into a dormant uh, mode uh, during the time uh, that the crew is handling uh, this equipment at the base of the 1B solar array. Okay, guys, so we're working right now for Tim Copra off page 13 of the cuff checklist. We know it's a small amount of water. Yep, and I can just read you the, the steps right now, Tim. Um, we already got the location and the quantity. If, if there's any way to get a temperature of the water, I don't know if you can move it around to get to that or to try to drink it and note the taste. It's about uh, three inches above my head. and. Uh, if I can make it mobile. Tim Copra reporting uh, a small amount of water inside uh, the helmet of his extravehicular mobility unit. The, the next little line there is if the DIDB is a confirmed source. We're handing over communications between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. Uh, about a half inch line that I was able to get in front of me. The water's cold. The secondary is water now. It's about a half inch wide, about two inches long. All 
Okay, guys, stand by just for a second. This is Mission Control Houston at the four hour, 10 minute mark into today's EVA. Guys, you can start opening your cuff checklist to page seven. We are in a terminate case and we're gathering words for Tim Peak and where we'll leave you there. Okay, copy that. 82, copy. So terminate EVA, ingress, crew lock, connect SCU. So I'm gonna clean up all my stuff here, Reed, and start heading back. Okay, for Tim, for Tim, for Tim Copra, we want you to get for Tim Copra. We want you to get your crew lock bag on your BRT and start heading back towards the airlock. For Tim Peak, we're developing words for you. Uh, for the most part, it's going to be tying down the bundle you have, giving us a good handrail location of what's going on. Copy that. This is Mission Control Houston once again at the four hour, 10 minute mark into today's spacewalk. At 10.58 a.m. Central Time, Flight Director Royce Renfrew directed the team to terminate to Peak, to, uh, today's spacewalk by Tim Copra and Tim Peake. Get it in a low profile, take a really good WVS survey around with your eyes and make sure that nothing is hanging out or loose. And then we'll take that handrail that's right in front of you that you are tying this thing down to. Okay, copy that, Reed. The uh, decision to terminate today's EVA uh, by Copra and Peak was made after Copra reported a small amount of water uh, and a small feeling of dampness uh, around his helmet absorption pad, uh, which was uh, installed on all uh, spacewalkers outside of the U.S. segment of the International Space Station following uh, an incident back in uh, July of 2013. On July 16th, 2013, when Chris Cassidy, who's now the chief of the astronaut office, uh, and Luca Parmitano were conducting a spacewalk. It was terminated in that case at the one hour, 32 minute mark after Parmitano uh, reported uh, an unexplained buildup of water uh, inside his helmet that was later traced uh, to cooling loop uh, chemistry issues. And we do need to retrieve that bag or at a minimum, the PEGT out of that bag. Uh, with the helmet off, uh, the uh, extravehicular mobility unit with the red stripes being assisted by Sergei Volkov on the right, Yuri Malenchenko on the left. Tim Peake is still inside the crew lock section. He'll be brought back inside the equipment lock uh, a short time from now. Obviously, Copra is in good shape, no issue there. Uh, the crew was never in any danger at the time uh, that Copra reported uh, this small water bubble inside the helmet that you see uh, being held uh, by Yuri Malenchenko. A good overhead view of Tim Copra back inside uh, the equipment lock section of Quest, uh, being assisted by uh, Scott Kelly uh, in the black shirt. And just on the right is uh, Russian cosmonaut uh, Yuri Malenchenko. They will assist now in removing uh, the safer unit, the simplified aid for EVA rescue, the jetpack unit from uh, the back of Copra's extravehicular mobility unit. Uh, just to recap uh, today's spacewalk, began at 6.48 a.m. Central Time. Copra and Peak uh, made uh, their way outside of the Quest airlock, set up shop on the starboard truss of the International Space Station, and uh, successfully replaced a failed voltage regulator unit called a sequential shunt unit that uh, stopped operating back on November 13th, taking down one of the uh, power channels on uh, the International Space Station. Other tasks uh, were in the process of being completed uh, by Copra and Peak when 
at uh, about 10.56 a.m. Central Time, Copra reported a, a small water bubble had formed inside his helmet. After a brief consultation, Flight Director Royce Renfrew ordered uh, today's spacewalk terminated. The crew made an orderly uh, return back to the Quest airlock, closed the hatch. Copra and Peak thanked uh, the flight control team for a great job uh, in uh, choreographing today's spacewalk to return the station to a full power capability. They closed the hatch behind them, the uh, spacewalk ending at 11.31 a.m. Central Time at the 4 hour 43 minute mark uh, when uh, the uh, airlock began uh, its repressurization. And as you can see, uh, Tim Copra back inside. Uh, he'll be joined uh, momentarily by Tim Peak. As um, all of the evidence, uh, water that had formed inside uh, Copra's helmet, plus uh, the helmet absorption pad that is standard uh, attire inside the helmet for all spacewalkers uh, and all other uh, pertinent uh, evidence is collected for future engineering analysis for any areas where we think the tubing could have leaked. Uh, that condensation we would expect that you just saw since we did go to max cold. Okay, understand that. Okay, I understand that. In the ventilation tube in the middle, there's water, some water in there too. I tried to get some pictures of that. We copy. <laughs> 